Are you debating traveling to Valencia, Spain in 2024? Well, I just got here after spending some time in Barcelona and I wanted to give my experiences, my thoughts, my opinions on what it's like to travel to Valencia, my first impressions here in 2024. I'm going to be staying in the Montel Livet neighborhood in downtown Valencia, which is really close to Ruzafa, which is pretty much the most common area for tourists to stay in for hotels and apartments. So in this video, I want to go through the food, the nightlife, things to do, what it's like to actually stay in this city, given my first time here. So without further ado, let's get into the video. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Alex and this is The Lifting Nomad. If you are new to my YouTube channel, I've been to 25 countries over the last few years, mostly drinking tequila, working out, and trying to enjoy as much of the local life as I can. And during that time, I've started to think that I have a pretty good idea of what makes this city desirable to visit, desirable to stay in for an extended period of time. Typically, I am in these cities for at least a month, so I like to think that I have a little bit of an idea of what to expect when you get here. Now, keep in mind, for my Spain review, I do speak pretty good Spanish. I've spent quite a lot of time in Latin America and South America, mostly in Argentina, Colombia, and Mexico, but my Spanish has gotten pretty good. I'd like to think I'm an honorary Latino at this point, so my experience here may be a little bit different than the average tourist who maybe doesn't, uh, doesn't speak any Spanish. However, this is my first time at all in Spain. I spent a lot of time in uh, Western and Eastern Europe, but never been to Spain before which I know is pretty funny considering it's probably one of the most popular destinations uh, for people to travel to. So let's start off a little bit of just like kind of setting the stage. I just came from Barcelona where I was there a week. I do have another video on that right here as well if you do want to check that out and see kind of the difference between Barcelona and Valencia. First thing first I want to talk about obviously the safety. Uh, I've been here a little while and I've spent some late late nights walking around pretty much most of this city and I would say this is absolutely one of the most safe cities I've been to uh, in Europe if not in my life. There's been a few nights where I've been rolling around like a sphere, licking my elbow after the nightclub, and I've still walked home and not felt pressured or nervous or worried whatsoever. Even going to the beach like Playa Marvelosa is probably the most common one that's like pretty close to downtown. A lot of people go there. It is, uh, it is just not that it's not that sus, you know, like when people talk about Barcelona, they get worried about leaving their things on the beach uh, or getting pickpocketed on the Ramblas or getting like their phone stolen from a nightclub. I haven't really felt that at all here in Valencia, just being around in the city, walking around at night, walking around during the day. I'm not like dressing down at all. I'm bringing my Apple products, my Apple watch. I'm letting like my jewelry hang out. It just hasn't felt at all like a sketchy city given it is Spain's third largest city here in Valencia. Coming into Valencia, I was coming from Barcelona by train. So I actually haven't gone to the airport to look at how easy it was to get in from the, the airport to the downtown. I took the train from Barcelona to the Joaquin Sorolla station here in Valencia. And it was only like a, I would say 20, 25 minute walk to my flat here in Montalouvet. It is uh, pretty walkable overall. It's kind of a typical sort of Spanish city from comparison to what I've heard versus uh, Barcelona. Um, you use things like Freenow, Cabify as the apps for getting around. But ironically, I've started using Uber taxis that are, seem to be coming a lot faster. And then a lot of times you're just getting like a Freenow or a Cabify car anyways. So, I mean, I experiment between the three when you are here, but generally people have recommended for me to use Cabify, but I would say for sure Uber Taxi has been faster. My friends have said the taxis are pretty fine to use and pretty safe, but uh, if you've ever watched any of my videos, I've talked about this before, I have had a really bad experience with taxis in the past, so I try not to ever hail a taxi on the street unless I absolutely have to. I really, really prefer to use the apps from a safety and a cost perspective. Being in the nightclubs, there hasn't really been much like drama. I feel like this city, uh, I'm in September while I'm here, so obviously it's not peak tourist season, but the shoulder seasons are usually still fairly busy. And it definitely has felt like a lot less tourist than when I was in Barcelona at the end of August. It is just like a very walkable, very livable city. People are just like really minding their own business. And ironically, a lot of the places here are still closed for vacation. There's a ton of people who summer during the uh, like July and August months here in Spain and then just close down their business during that time. So if you are here, you may notice that a lot of businesses, a lot of restaurants are closed in certain areas of the city. All right, let's talk about the costs a little bit. Now I'm gonna compare this to some of the other places I have been in in Europe. Uh, this year alone, I was in Scotland over Canada Day. I uh, went to Edinburgh, went to Glasgow. 
Uh, I was in Greece and Athens, and I took a bunch of the, the sort of islands around uh, in Greece as well. Historically, I've been to Dublin. I've been to Paris. Um, I was in Croatia for quite a while. So I do have kind of a pretty good barometer of what things should cost. I would say overall, Spain has been relatively affordable and Valencia even more affordable than Barcelona was. Things just really aren't that expensive if you're smart about where you're going. There are, of course, like extremely nice restaurants here. Like, for instance, I went to El Poble, which is a two-star Michelin dinner. Did cost, I think, like 320 euros for food and wine pairing. I knew what I was getting myself into, and I think it was worth it. It was one of the, probably the number three meal of my life. But just to give you some perspective on what the high end looks like. Overall, for sure, like going to a bar or, or a restaurant, you can get a pint of beer for, I would say, like three to five euros, depending on the place. Thankfully, Valencia doesn't really have like a La Ramblas that's like overly touristy and really big ripoff. Even going to some of like the higher end restaurants, you're not going to be paying more than like five to seven euros for a beer. Wine can vary quite a lot. We've been going to places where you can get like two to five euros for a glass. And then obviously, if you're going to the higher end places, like five to 15, let's say. But either way, you can go to a grocery store or a Dia or Carrefour or any of the consumes, like any of the supermark supermercados or <laughs> supermercats, as they say. It's very very affordable to get a bottle of wine or beers there in the grocery store i would say for a beer you're like 50 cents of a euro up to like a dollar a euro depending on the type uh and then bottles of wine anywhere from like two to ten euros for really low end up to the higher end for a bottle which is you know honestly pretty reasonable outside of that like the meal wise <clears throat> outside of that meal wise i would say breakfast you're like five to seven euros uh lunch anywhere from like five to ten euros dinner from like 10 to 20 euros, depending on the place you are. And um, like I said, there are every sort of scope of, of restaurant you want to go to, whether that's one you want to stay local and go to like an empanada place, or you want to like maybe ball out and go to like a rooftop. There is a little bit of everything here in the city that can accommodate pretty much any budget, I would say, whether you're staying in hostel uh, on a cheap budget or you're maybe, you know, maybe here on vacation and you're here to ball out. I think there's really a lot of options for everyone. Things to do. I have had a blast since I've been here. This has been one of my most uh, fun cities of things to do. Uh, where I'm staying in the Motel de Vet is super, super close to La Ciudad de Artes y Ciencias, which is the city of arts and sciences. And if you've ever been to Valencia or if you've ever seen this before, this is incredible. I'm going to kind of do a bit of a highlight reel of the different buildings here, but it is honestly probably the most insane complex of buildings I've ever seen in my life. I don't think I've seen something like this before. I didn't even really appreciate how cool this was. When you come into the city, you may be driving over it. It kind of looks like the Sydney Opera House, if anyone's seen that. But it's, uh, it's a massive complex and they have basically multiple different buildings doing multiple different purposes. They have um, like the Les Artes building, which is like a museum, a symphony, a, uh, a theater, a restaurant down below. Then they have like the Hemispheric, which is the IMAX sort of um, Cinesphere sort of style movie theater in there where they show documentaries. Then you have the actual Museo de las Ciencias, which is like the science museum here. Haven't got to go into it yet, but as you can see from the outside, it's incredible. Then as you keep moving along, you have the actual like event building. I actually forget the name of that. But then after the event space, you have the Oceanographic, which is the Europe's largest aquarium. Again, I haven't got to go in here yet. Um, I'm again, first impressions, just been here a little bit of while, just getting settled and getting set up in the city. But it's been uh, it's been incredible. This building, this complex alone, City of Arts and Sciences, if you are in Valencia, you need to come here, if not multiple times. I'm staying close by to it. And literally every single day I walk through this complex, it is beautiful. There's the water, there's the buildings, there's the people, the vibe. It is it is immaculate. And truly, I would recommend coming to Valencia just for this alone. Uh, outside of that, they have some other attractions, of course. Uh, the beaches are gorgeous. There's the harbor. There's there's uh, the bio park I went to, which is like a zoo. Um, anyone who's watched my videos, you know I'm a diehard zoo fan. So I actually thought this was really cool. Pretty much an African-focused zoo. Like we had uh, like elephants and rhinos and ostriches and uh, like monkeys and things like that from the African continent. Uh, I think it was really cool. It was pretty expensive. It cost about 30 euros a ticket to go, which is fairly pricey for a zoo. But I thought it was beautiful. It was clean. They also do a lot of conservation efforts here in Valencia. It's a very green city. So you know that this money is actually going towards like good things. Outside of that, they also have the Mercat Central, which is like the central market, kind of in the El Carmen, the northern part of the downtown area of Valencia, with over 300 different stalls, everything from, uh, from fish to meat to cheese to wine. 
to beer. Like this place is super, super cool. Uh, it's open during the day for like before lunch service. You can go in there and then it'll be closed again for a little bit and then it'll open back up. Generally coming in here, they recommend not to come in on Mondays because anyone who's actually uh, going out and like catching fish or catching raw product doesn't do it on Sundays. So there won't be a lot of product to come in on a Monday. So generally I start on like Tuesday up till Saturday. Additionally, you know, I always like to reiterate just this city is gorgeous, like walking the streets. Um, there's palm tree lined avenues. There's like fancy shopping centers. Uh, streets are really, really clean, well taken care of. Uh, they have a, a very solid like garbage system. It is, uh, it is just beautiful. Walking around here, just looking around and then looking at the buildings is, it, it kind of just makes you feel all warm and fuzzy, honestly. Food and drink, I think it's uh, coming into this city. I was told the nightlife was not going to be that good. And I will say I was pleasantly surprised. They have some really standout places. Uh, a couple places that I would absolutely recommend. Um Broccoli in the city of arts and sciences. The Marina Beach Club, which is really kind of in the harbor area. It's an interesting place. They have like a traditional sort of beach club with a pool and day beds. They also have a fancy restaurant. And then they also have like an Ibiza style outdoor nightclub. Marina Beach Club, big recommendation for that. Cocktail bars, I haven't really experimented too much, but I have on a few on my list. There's a place called Hocus Pocus Pub, which is supposed to be a Harry Potter themed bar in the El Carmen area. There's just been a lot of kind of walking around and exploring different places. I will say there's a ton of like true Latino restaurants here. Like I've seen Colombian, Argentinian, Peruvian, like a lot of mixed uh, sort of Latino culture here, not just exclusively from Hispania. So it's been kind of a nice and refreshing taste for me, who's someone who spent a lot of time in, in Latin America. It's nice to kind of feel like that, that home sort of sense. Uh, cocktail wise, I thought it was kind of interesting. Maybe this was my ignorance, but the states are very, very specific about the types of beer they actually drink. So for instance, Barcelona is in Catalonia. So they drink pretty much Estrella, which is like the, I guess the beer of Barcelona or the beer of, of Catalan. But then here in Valencia, you're in like the Valencia state and then this is the Valencia city. They drink like Amstel and like totally different kinds of beer. You won't actually see Estrella much, which before I came to Spain and pretty much the only Spanish beer I recognized was Estrella. So I thought that was kind of an interesting thing to see, but the beer has been really good. They have a good selection of everything from like Costada beer, which is toasted in Spanish, but it's kind of like a, a darker roast sort of like honey, like a little bit more body to it. Interesting beer, not quite at like a hazy IPA, which is disgusting. I don't know who drinks those, but I've, I've been pleasantly surprised. They have a good mix of like these mega style nightclubs in combination with like dive bars, local restaurants of people sitting on patios, just having a coffee or having a beer during the middle of the day. Um, it's been, it's been great. And I think like just eating here has been super, super good. I would guess I'm down like five to six pounds since I've gotten to Spain. The grocery stores have an incredible selection of, of meat, of veggies, of like charcuterie, of cheese. And like, you're able to just get a good selection of food for a reasonable price. So I think like this has been probably one of the easiest fitness countries I've been to. My gym is really, really good. Fitness Park Ruzafa, shout out if you're here. That's where you got to get. That's where you got to go. Four benches, four squat racks. It is, it is great. Really busy and yeah, I mean, I, I love it in there. So far loving Valencia. I would put it honestly like top three cities for me in Spain. I did have a great time in, in Barcelona, but it, it's, it's for me like too big of a city, I think. And the only beach is kind of pretty far away from the downtown. Uh, I had a great time in Barcelona, don't get me wrong. They have a beautiful metro. The, the bus system works great. The food is amazing. The nightlife's incredible. The people were friendly. I just think it was a little bit too much for me. Uh, Valencia feels like a much more livable city, uh, much more like down to earth kind of vibe, less tourists. I'm guessing less crime overall, just feels more safe every time we've gone out. Um, but the people have been so friendly. The food has been awesome. The nightlife has been great. I'm excited to create some more videos here and show you like a little bit more in depth of some of the things we've been doing. I do want to show some of the gym content too and, and some of the, the, uh, the grocery store food. This was my first impressions of Valencia. Hopefully it was useful if you are considering coming out here. It is, um, it's awesome. So that's all I can say. If you're thinking about it, just do it. Valencia is great. Third largest city in Spain. I would say it's difficult to get out here if you're not already in Spain at like Madrid or, or Barcelona. And because there are not a ton of direct flights out, I have to fly from Valencia to Lisbon to Toronto home when I do eventually leave. But otherwise, there's not much I can say bad about this city. It's been, it's been glorious. So thank you very much for watching this video. Hopefully it was useful to see my first impressions of, uh, of Valencia. If you want to see, again, Barcelona, I've also got Athens, Edinburgh, and Glasgow as well. So I've been kind of traveling around, um, checking out the first impressions of these cities if you want to check out some of the other videos. But again, thank you very much for watching. My name is Alex. Welcome back to Lifting Nomad. We'll see you in the next one. Peace.